One of the things that people have trouble with with getting started with using herbs medicinally is they're not sure where to start. And one of the easiest places to start is just inside your kitchen herb and spice cupboard because a lot of the herbs that we use culinary wise to flavor our food also can be used medicinally. And some of my top favorites are going to be sage, thyme, garlic, rosemary, and ginger. All of those probably sound very familiar to you. And we are gonna go and talk about all of these because almost all of these can be grown at home in your kitchen garden. So let's go talk about the medicinal properties of each of these outside as we harvest them. Now the garlic, we actually have hanging out here in our movable chicken tractor because I was running out of spaces where it was dry but getting adequate airflow to finish curing before we bring this harvest indoors. So you can see we've got lots and lots of lovely cloves here that are just finishing drying all the way before I braid them. But garlic is a excellent herb to use medicinally. So when we're talking about energetics, there's four energetics that herbs have. Garlic is warming. So a warming herb is great to use anytime you have a cold because typically you are feeling cold when you have a cold. So you want to match an energetic and warming is the desirable effect. Beyond that, garlic has a lot of great properties. It is both anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, it can be an expectorant, all really good things that we are looking for with cold symptoms. But garlic also can be used as an immune stimulant, so it can help stimulate the immune system so that our bodies can fight off naturally whatever things that we are dealing with. Garlic can be a great herb to use whenever we're dealing with respiratory issues, which usually happens when we have a common cold. So using garlic raw is really great in order to extract these properties. And fire cider is one of our favorite ways to put garlic to use. So you can go and watch that video if you haven't checked it yet for my exact recipe. So now let's go look at one of my next favorite of our five herbs. Now, rosemary is an excellent herb, both cooking wise, culinary wise, but also to use medicinally. However, if you live in a colder climate, usually a more Northern climate, it can be really hard to get rosemary to last all year round. So I feel like I would be doing you a disservice if we didn't address this really quick in this video. This rosemary plant is almost 10 years old and prior to growing it in a pot, that has southern exposure on our back deck so it's tucked against the side of our deck and then it's getting any southern exposure warmth in the winter months and also heat that radiates back from being up against a wooden wall with southern exposure oh lord so both getting the southern exposure for any sunlight we do have during the winter months, but also having that heat radiate from having this wooden deck around it and being in a black pot. I have been able to overwinter and keep this for over 10 years now when prior to just growing it in the ground out in the garden, my rosemary would die every single year. So putting it in a pot and using a microclimate may be the secret so that you can overwinter your rosemary too. So normally I just will come out here and grab fresh rosemary almost all year long, though I will get a little bit and dry it to use during the extreme part of the winter months when I just don't want to come out and it's really went back into dormancy. However, medicinal property wise, rosemary is great. Now talking about those energetics, especially with the cold, rosemary is both warming and drying and can also be a stimulant. Rosemary is anti-inflammatory, it's antimicrobial, and rosemary is really great for helping to open up if you have any type of nasal congestion. Rosemary also has antioxidant properties, is a circulatory system stimulant, and also a diaphoretic. One of my favorite ways to use rosemary is in an herbal steam, especially when you have those cold symptoms where it just feels like everything is congested and you have a lot of nasal pressure. It's one of my favorite ways to use rosemary. Now, rosemary culinary wise is safe during pregnancy, but when you're using herbs medicinally, because you are using them at higher doses. Uh, rosemary is not one that's recommended to use medicinal strength wise or as often as you would 
in pregnancy and nursing. So with any of these herbs, you do definitely wanna check if you have any health conditions or medical conditions, etc doing your due diligence. Now inside the course, I have all of that outlined for you when we are talking about specific herbs on contraindications and warnings. And whenever you have the really aromatic herbs, which rosemary is definitely one of those, then that means that it's got a high concentration of the volatile oils. And so for both congestion, but also the antimicrobial properties, makes rosemary a top pick for dealing with cold and flu symptoms. Up next on our list is thyme. And you're probably recognizing a little bit of a pattern here, especially with the rosemary and now the thyme. These are stronger flavored. You're definitely going to notice them, but that also means that they have those concentrations of those volatile oils, which is really great when we're talking medicinal properties. Energetic wise, thyme is also warming and drying, hence using when you have cold symptoms. Its actions are anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antimicrobial, antiparasitic, antispasmodic, as well as an expectorant. All great qualities when you are dealing with a cold, though hopefully you're not dealing with a cold and parasites, though it is antiparasitic. Now important, when we are thinking about coughs that we have with colds and using herbs for them, sometimes we have a very dry cough. So usually dry coughs are not productive, meaning we're not actually coughing things up out of our lungs. It's kind of that dry hacking cough, which can be a sign that you've got inflammation going on and that's why you're experiencing that and can get quite uncomfortable. And then you have what we call a productive cough where you're actually coughing up uh, mucus and stuff and clearing out the airways and removing them. So when you have a productive cough, most of the time, as long as it's not so productive that you're unable to sleep, we want to let that productive cough and we want to get that stuff up and out. However, when you have that dry cough and it's not productive, then that's oftentimes when we will look for some soothing measures and wanting to use herbs. So it's important uh, to distinguish between those coughs because they're not all the same. And because time is drying, if you have a dry cough already, then thyme probably isn't going to be the best choice of herbs for you to use because it's going to be adding a drying effect on top of that. So it's important to pay attention to those energetics and pairing the herb with the symptoms that you are experiencing. But because thyme can be very helpful as an expectorant with the antimicrobial, the antibacterial and all of that, it is a great herb to have on hand when you are dealing with cough and cold symptoms and lower and upper respiratory issues. Now our next herb is one of my absolute favorites, so I kind of feel like I say that about almost everyone. So sage is one of the very first herbs that I started using when using herbs medicinally. So this is my lovely sage that grows right outside my door and I just think it's so pretty. Um, I know we're talking about medicinal properties, but herbs can bring a lot of joy. And I think this one is just gorgeous. It's very, very soft to the touch, highly aromatic, which again means it's got a lot of those volatile oils in there, which is great when we're talking medicinal properties. But sage is one of my favorites. Anytime I am dealing with anything um, sore throat related or throat issues where I need soothing action, sage is the first thing that I reach for. One of my favorite ways to use sage is to make a medicinal cup of tea, which means I'm going to be brewing it stronger and longer than you are typically for just a cup of tea that you're just enjoying because you like the flavor. And then pairing that with raw honey, oh, it is so soothing. Um, I had a really, really bad case of laryngitis where I actually lost my voice for a couple of weeks. Not really a great thing when you are a podcaster and also do videos uh, for a living because I couldn't do any of that. And sage with raw honey was, oh, it brought so much relief. So it's one of my favorites. But when we are talking about energetics, Sage is both warming and drying. I think you're kind of realizing we've got a trend there with our energetics with these herbs, um, but it has also got some great properties as well. So it is anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, antioxidant properties, 
antispasmodic, astringent, diaphoretic, as well as an expectorant. So those are all really great things. If you do have a sore throat, those are a lot of properties that you want to be able uh, to help aid the body uh, to get over those. And sage, even living in a northern climate where it's cool, is one of those that by growing it in a container that is up next to the house, so it's a little bit more protected and has the benefit of the heat reflecting and that southern exposure, this sage plant I've had growing here in this same pot for over 10 years. So really take advantage of those microclimates if you are looking to grow some of these and maybe you've struggled growing it in the ground and having harsh winters and it not making it through. Containers have been the ticket for me with these herbs. Now of these five kitchen herbs, there's one that I can't grow or should say I'm not growing here yet. So let's go talk about that back in the kitchen. Now here we have ginger root, which I do not grow ginger root. I have it on my bucket list to play with to see if I can successfully grow it here. But this is one that I am still purchasing from the store and the homestead is not producing. But many of us know ginger from obviously using it in our food as a spice, but actually a lot of people are very familiar with ginger, especially with nausea, upset stomach, morning sickness, has a lot of different plays coming into that. I happen to suffer from seasickness, so ginger is one that I will attempt to use, though I have to be honest, we went on a deep sea fishing trip and as much as I love ginger, it did not quell all of the sea sickness. But ginger is known for using in chais. It is a very warming spice. So a lot of times those warming, we call them energetics in the herbal world. So warming and drying are two of the energetic properties of ginger. And while it's known for digestion, helping to get that going and to warming up the body, which can be great when you have a cold, it also has some other great properties. Specifically, ginger has anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, antispasmodic, as well as expectorant properties. It has more than that, but as we're talking about treating the common cold, the ginger can be a powerhouse for that. Now, most of us use ginger of course in culinary and that's fine, but when you are using herbs medicinally, because in most instances you're using them at a much higher dose than you would if you were just eating them as a spice in food when we're looking to use them as medicinal properties, you wanna make sure that you are using precautions and ginger also helps with circulation, but if you are on blood clotting medications or have a blood clotting disorder or are on blood thinners, ginger is one that you should definitely check with your doctor before using medicinally and use with caution. Or if you have some scheduled surgeries, that type of a thing. Because ginger has anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and expectorant properties, it can be a great one to use to help aid the body when you have the cold or flu, especially with those symptoms. Inside my full herbal course, we have got papers that go much, much further in depth than your download guides that let you know about specific dosing, warnings, and specific recipes in order to put these herbs to use medicinally. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you wanna learn more about using herbs medicinally, both safely and effectively at home, go to melissaknorris.com forward slash herb class and get on the wait list where I'm gonna be doing some free herb teaching and some more sneak peeks and resources inside my full herbal course.